Hello, Foghorns and Leghorns. I'm Carla Lally Music, cookbook author and hardcore Cypress Grove fan. And today I am here to make squash and leek galette with Humboldt Fog and pomegranate drizzle. This is a perfect dish for entertaining. It is great for the holidays or any time that you want to kind of tuck into a cozy weekend savory baking project. The pairing of the sweet leeks and the earthy squash are classic, but adding slices of Humboldt fog to the warm galette right when it comes out of the oven takes it to a whole other level. Let me show you how it's done. I'm looking at a three pound wheel of Humboldt Fog. You will find it in different sizes because I'm starting with a three pound wheel. I'm gonna cut it down into wedges and the best way to get clean cuts is with this wire cutter, which I have become introduced to in working with Humboldt Fog and it is kind of amazing. This is my favorite part, opening it up to see the iconic cross section. So what you get when you cut into it, we have the rind, which is edible. There's this creamy layer just below the rind, that dense paste in the center, the layer of ash, and then like a palindrome, it repeats on the other side. I'm gonna take these down now to about a four ounce wedge that I can then trim. The reason why I wanna cut the cheese at the very beginning is I want it to come to room temperature while I'm doing the rest of the prep. The closer to room temperature it is from the beginning, the more quickly it will soften while it sits on the warm galette. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut away the rind. The reason that I'm removing the rind, even though I will 100% snack on this, is because it won't really soften and melt in the same way that the center and the creamy layer of the cheese will. And those are the textures that I'm going for. This should be about three ounces. I'm gonna try to keep the slices intact, but if your slices crumble into big pieces while you're doing this, it is totally fine. It is still gonna taste amazing. Before I show you how to cut up the acorn squash for the filling, let me tell you what is already done. The leeks have been cut into half moons. I've got some chopped garlic and then their sliced red onion, which is gonna be part of the edge of the galette. The entire recipe from top to bottom is available on the Humboldt Fog website. So go there to get the printable version that has all of these little steps that you're not necessarily seeing me do. For the acorn squash, I love using them because they're a really convenient size. You're gonna use the entire one up in this galette and not get left with like half of a butternut or a big hunk of kabocha somewhere else. And they tend to weigh the same. The other thing that's great about them is that this will cook completely through in the amount of time that the galette is in the oven. So there's no pre-cooking or separate cooking or worrying that it's not gonna be tender. What I don't love about acorn squash is that because they have these ridges, it can be difficult to peel every bit of the skin. Personally, I actually don't mind eating the skin of a thin skinned winter squash like this, but over the years, I've kind of figured out that it's not worth trying to get into the in-betweens. Got these edges that stick up. They're really easy to peel. Just using your peeler, you're gonna go around and just where it naturally wants to catch, which is going to be the highest parts of the squash. And so what you end up with is this kind of zebra striped or striated effect on the squash. Once that's done, I'm just gonna break this down into two halves and get rid of the seeds. So I'm taking out the insides. Okay, so now I have my two halves, turning it over onto the flat side so that it doesn't rock and roll all over you. And then I'm gonna cut into roughly half inch pieces. So another thing about me that some people don't know, a lot of people do know it, I have a really hard time with fall. I'm a seasonal shift when we're going in this direction. I, there's a lot of mood shifting that is also happening. Shorter days, not my fave. My thing is going through the fall season and being reminded that there are some things that I do really love about fall, but most of them take place indoors. So there is something really lovely about putting your oven on again. There is something lovely about being cozy and being inside. And then when I look at acorn squash, especially the foods that I crave in the fall are the orange and the green foods. And so making something like this, which is delicious and like comforting and homey and makes people happy, is a great way to get through the seasonal blues. 
I'm gonna coat it with a little bit of olive oil. Every element in the filling is gonna be packed with flavor. So I don't wanna just put in naked squash in the same way that you would season apple slices before you bake them into a pie. I want these to taste really good on their own and having the oil on them is gonna help them roast inside of the galette. So this is kosher salt and black pepper. I'll just toss that one more time to make sure it's coated. Everything is done. I'm ready to make the leek filling. And after that, we assemble. Now we're getting into the leek filling. So I've got about half a stick of butter. I'm gonna get this warmed up to foaming over medium to medium high to start. And then I'm going to drop the temperature quite a bit because I wanna really cook out the leeks until they're super tender before letting them take on any color. Beautiful foamy butter, gorgeous leeks. This is a match made in heaven. I love using butter for this because it is just so sweet and rich and goes so beautifully with the buttery crust. So the first thing is just to make sure all the leeks are tossed in the butter to coat and then I'm gonna season and once the salt hits them, it's gonna really encourage a lot of their liquid to get expelled right from the beginning and what looks here to be, you know, a quart of chopped leeks is gonna shrink down to a layer that really just goes on the bottom layer of the galette and almost melts into the crust. I like a little red pepper because there are so many kind of sweet and earthy flavors. Having something that's got a little bit of um, heat and bite on it, I think is really nice. It's not gonna make this spicy. It's just gonna make it more balanced. Now that the leeks are coated with fat and they're seasoned right from the get-go, I'm gonna cover the pot. And doing so is gonna trap a lot of steam inside of here, which sounds counterintuitive, but having a hot steamy environment is actually going to jumpstart the liquid release of the leeks and kind of get us through that step even faster. And once all that liquid has been driven off of the leeks, then it can start to cook down. Two to three minutes in, you're gonna see steam kind of bursting from the sides and opening up the lid. Lots of steam has accumulated and I'm letting that all drip back in and stirring. So this has already probably lost about half of its volume. There's a lot of liquid accumulating in the bottom of the pot, which is now a mixture of leek juices and butter. I'm gonna cook this, checking on it, stirring every now and again until I feel like the leeks are very, very tender and silky, but they're not falling apart. And that process will take between six and 10 minutes. I think this is gonna be it for the first stage of the leeks. What I'm seeing now is that instead of it looking just very steamy and wet when I pull the lid open, I can tell that the leeks are starting to fry in the butter, which means that the liquid has been driven off. So I'm just gonna turn the heat from medium low, like a little bit more towards medium. And now I'm gonna cook and sort of pay attention to what's happening until I start to see some browning at the edges. And that's just a matter of minutes. Getting started on the pomegranate drizzle. This is sweet and tart. It complements all of the flavors, including the Humboldt Fog. It's super fallish, and then any leftovers of the drizzle are gonna be great with your leftover cheese, and you're just gonna be drizzling and snacking in a truly happy place when this is over. The honey is really here to balance, to give more sweetness, to balance out the tartness and the sourness of the pomegranate. I also started this with a little bit of water. If I were to just bring the pomegranate molasses and the honey together and simmer them, immediately it would be glazed consistency. So I've got the water in the pan to allow for some time for the water to evaporate and things to simmer before it's a glaze again, and that's gonna help with flavor development. Because the other things that are going in here, a little bit of lemon zest. I'm gonna do two big strips. I have a cinnamon stick, which is again, really nice kind of fallish flavors. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt at the beginning and just let this come up to a simmer. 
Once it's simmering, I want to control the heat to give it that time to come back down to a glaze. If you go too fast, it's not giving the lemon and the cinnamon enough time with the other ingredients to actually develop any flavor. Got nice big caramelly bubbles happening. I can see from looking at the side, this is reduced by at least a third, maybe a half, and kind of just becoming that glaze texture. So when I swipe through it on the spatula and holds that trail, so that's another indication that it's thickened a bit. So I'm gonna turn off the heat, giving it a taste. I think it needs more salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper to kind of bring out more of the savory and like a little bit of spiciness. And then to add some freshness, brightness, a little bit of sweetness, more of that fresh sour flavor as opposed to like a long reduced pomegranate sour, just uh, about a couple teaspoons, tablespoon of lemon juice, but you can really do this to taste. Mmm. Mmm. That's nice. This would be a good concentrate just to make a spritz with. This is delicious. And if you're making this ahead of time, I would wait to add the citrus and definitely wait before adding the pistachios until the day that you want to serve it. So you could do the whole reduction and kind of keep this just at room temperature and then adjust the seasoning and add the nuts on the day that you bake the galette. My dough is rolled out. I've got it on parchment now. What I generally do is just slide it right onto the rim baking sheet rather than worrying about picking it up or folding it or doing anything like that. And then all of the assembly I like to have done on my rimmed baking sheet so that there's no maneuvering and things falling off in order to get it from one place to another next time. So the dough is rolled out. It looks gorgeous. I have my leek filling and I'm gonna spread this evenly everywhere within an inch of the very edge of the perimeter of the dough. And the reason I'm not going all the way to the edges is because I'm gonna fold those edges over and if there's leak there, it's gonna be too thick and too hard to fold. So now I have my seasoned sliced squash. You can really arrange these in any kind of a pattern. You could go in a spiral, you could go in kind of alternating rows, or you could do what I'm gonna do, which is really just try to get all of the pieces on here. So my sliced onion from before, I'm gonna add to the squash juices. This is olive oil, salt, pepper, and a little bit of liquid that the squash let out. Just tossing to coat them, separating any slices that are stuck together, and those will be standing by for the edge. So now in order to fold the galette, it's very simple, just sort of pulling up from the edge. If the dough is too cold, it's not gonna fold nicely. It'll feel brittle and almost like it's going to rip or tear. So if that's the case, then just give it a minute on the work surface to soften. If it feels incredibly soft to you or you feel like butter is leaking out through the flour, then it's a little too warm and I would slide this back into the fridge for five or 10 minutes to firm up the dough. Um, but I got lucky and my dough is perfect. And before I add the onion, I'm gonna do my egg wash so that that onion mixture has something to stick to and the egg wash will also make the edge of the dough extra kind of burnished and glossy and pretty. So with the onion, I wanna definitely kind of focus it to the edge of the galette and as this bakes, the onion is going to kind of fuse into the crust and it's gonna get brown and caramelized and it's just a really nice kind of complement to those soft and sweet leeks that are underneath. All right, my oven is at 375. Now that my onions are on, my squashes are squashed and shingled, it's ready to bake. And this is what the galette should look like when it's done. That big heap of juicy red onions have cooked down, become crispy and brown. The squash has also settled and taken on some color. The leek mixture you can see poking out from in between. But really the most important indicator for me 
is the color of the crust. A darker crust is gonna be crispier. You're not gonna have a soggy bottom because there is a lot of vegetable happening here and it's gonna have the best flavor. So while it is still really nice and hot straight out of the oven, we have the Humboldt Fog slices that are really nice and room temperature now. And I'm just gonna place them kind of here and there on top so that the heat and the steam that's rising from the galette is going to soften and start to melt the cheese. One of the most important things I've learned about Humboldt Fog while working with it this year is that it is not a cheese that you want to melt and get bubbly because the texture of it is best if it's warmed up just to the point where it softens. Because really, the cheese is the star and that's why it is crowning the galette. So this is gonna sit for 10 or 15 minutes just until the oozy bits are a little more oozy and the center is softened and then I can cut into it. So after a few minutes, you'll see some of the creamy layer that was directly underneath the rind has started to really get shiny and it's starting to move a little bit. The same way that I slid it on, I'm gonna slide it off. Cutting this into wedges, every piece is gonna have a little bit of everything. You really can't go wrong. I like to cut it into wedges before putting on the drizzle because if you drizzle the entire thing, it just won't be as even. And there might be people who don't eat nuts and that way you can kind of control who, who's getting it and who isn't. And kind of draping that glaze over. And then some of those pistachios are coming too. This is holiday for one. Yum, good bite, perfect bite. Mmm. It's like you have an entire ladder and it's got multiple creamy layers in the middle of the foundation of this, but they all stand on their own. And then you get the creamy, salty, goaty, fresh, herbaceous layer of the Humboldt Fog on the very top and everything is anchored by this super crisp bottom. The tartness of the pomegranate glaze like cuts through all of the richness and crunchy nuts. It is really, 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 really good. No bottom like a crispy bottom, I always say. Thank you again to Humboldt Fog for giving me the opportunity. I hope that you will think about this cheese off of the cheese board and into the center of your plate and it is just one of the best, funnest, most rewarding cheeses in the land. <laughs>